again, the ancient names for God was unmovable in our English language. It means unmovable. It doesn't waver. Because, as you can see, the whole living manifested world, illusion and outside the illusion, is all in motion. That's why even the, the, the books of the dead, they all say you must always prepare for change. The cosmos is always moving. But there is this other phase that does not move. And that is the supreme phase. It is unmovable. It is the rock, if you may. That's what everything is built on. And the reason why that, that's mentioned that way is because it's only on something stable can things be created. And that's why you have to find the place to build your nest. And this is why uh, that's important is because when you remain in your serpentine state, let's say, your shield, your coils are also your prison. See, if you build up all these fortresses and all this protection, that also becomes your prison from getting outside of the entire construct of fear. And I need to see, but I'm not saying in this world right now that we don't have to keep on guard. But what I'm saying is just like a bird, a bird builds the nest where they feel safe. So that way that they can go through the process of real birth without terrorizing the children with their fears and all these kind of things. So just bear with me on where I'm coming from and all this. What I'm saying is, is that in these higher states of meditation, what I've noticed is if you can't unsheath, if you can't take off the protection, you can't go beyond. And at times it becomes a shame in this reality that we have so many thoughts and ideas and illusions and, and, and malevolent eidolons running amok in our own consciousness that we cannot disrobe ourselves at any moment in order to reach the true beyond because our coil and our protection and our shield has also become our prison. You see, so that same attitude of, you know, I can't deal with anyone outside because, you know, these folks are crazy. And that may be the case, but that still doesn't mean that that doesn't produce a level of stagnancy to where we have a difficult time connecting with 90 percent, 95 percent of our planetary body. These are the, the this is what, you know, the, the repercussions behind what's going on. So just because all of a sudden we want to change one of those things, it doesn't necessarily affect us the way that we want to. Like we don't get the effect. You take, you know, your your uh, your armor off and then you go off into the matrix and, you know, don't be surprised if you come back infected. That's just what goes on. You see. So but just realize there are states of your consciousness and where we're what we're searching for is we're searching for the place to where we can lay down. Our, our armor and lay down our worries and our fears so that we can be our true selves. And that, that's what this is all about. This is what we're working to secure this realm for. So that way we can really bring up our young, which is our younger side of our souls and our biorhythms, in an atmosphere to where we're not at most fear. You see what I mean? That, and, and to understand the order to this, because this is, this is going to be a bit difficult for people to take, but because the illusion is built inside of a real mainframe, what goes on in the illusion, if it, it's only damaging you. Like people who are dying and getting killed and getting cussed out and stabbed and drinking and dope dealers and all this is all part of the illusion. But we have to understand the major damage is being done to us because we're being bounced around in this illusion while outside the illusion, none of this exists. There's only order. See, when we built the illusionary world on chaos, then we live in a world of chaos. We use collectively our projectors to project this chaos, this rules and systems, these languages and all of that stuff. And then the worst things can happen to us in here and it's affecting us. But make no mistake, there's no eating outside of this. If you want to answer the question, the deepest question that many people have when they start really getting deep into this knowledge about, well, why do we consume? Well, outside the matrix, there's no consumption. 
There's no animals attacking other animals and running the animal down. That's all part of the illusion. But every single being that is existing within the illusion is only damaging itself by continuously tapping into this field of what now has become our habitation. This has become where we live and what we do. And we've loaded all this stuff. But that's what that's where the genius is going to come from in us. Because now that this has all been cooked up, we now must dissolve it we now must that they say you know you've learned now you must unlearn you protected yourself now you must learn that you don't need protection so all of these you know back and forth and back and forth see that's that's the weathering to me i have to accept that that the universe is a university earth is one of the classrooms this is what it's about now for me like i gotta be in real time i can't lean on some ideas and thoughts of what it's supposed to be and how it could be another way i must deal with it right now and then i must be able to fully take account of what's happened so that we know what to do next and i know that this is it's not easy it doesn't have that kind of label on it it can be quite confusing it's a paradox so you could be hypocritical even you could be harpocrates in this like it's all there and we must make sense of it we must make it stable that's what uh, overtone is that is what the over souls are that's what they're here for they're pillars so you are to become a pillar to uphold those who are taught being tossed about to become a safe safe uh, uh house for them to become that beacon of light on the on the rocky ocean to let them know how to guide their ships that's that's what the people i believe that are listening to this are all about and so that's why I bring it to this level. So, so understand or understand this. When our children are in the room, and again, the, the coil-like hyperdimensional perspective, this would be you. And this is also if you choose to bring children in the world, mothers, th those children are already hypersentient. There's nothing to teach them. There's only the dumbing down that must take place. Let us get it straight. So when we talk about oh, we're going to grow into having these powers and abilities, well, we already had those powers and abilities in the womb, and we're looking to restore them. And this is how you know, because a child can perceive things even through the amniotic fluid. Through the fluid, the child knows if mom is mad, if mom is happy, but through all the sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch, the child can do right through the fluid and through the pH. The child can th tell through the pH of the mother and the light that it gives off because the pH is light. P high pH is electrical. It gives off light. So the child can see these lights and is and using this kind of knowledge to determine where it's at in this matrix. Okay? Because this word matrix has nothing to do with the movie, by the way. The word matrix, we have to always put false matrix when we use the word matrix because the word matrix just means a womb it doesn't mean a movie that the Rakowski brothers made they made a movie about the false matrix so truly this hyper sight hearing taste smell touch and six seven eight cents is already present within the child so when the child comes into the world that's when the dumbing down begins and trust me, it doesn't take but six or seven months for this hyperdimensional, hyper-sentient being to lose at least 80% of its powers in a cold hospital room to where the separ it's separated from the mother during the most critical times. It learns from that desperation. So throughout the rest of this child's life, it has a problem with being left alone because of something that happened in a phase in which it never even knew occurred. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's since you were an egg and now they want to get to the night. They want to get to the idea. Why were you created? See, this is why they want to get to the idea because they want to mess up the whole reason on why you were created when you're unbegotten. You're not a created being. Your entry into these kind of physical matrixes is like an everyday, every hour, every moment thing. 
But they want to say, okay, well, you know what? We want to tap with the idea. You were created to serve. Yeah, we want to tap with the idea. You were, cr- you were created out of a mistake. You were created from an alien. You see, that's when you try to get at the idea. See, because they were at the egg before. And that's why you see all of these drawings where, the, you know, the two serpents, that's the king and the priest, are trying to argue over getting this one egg, that be you, and that also is the earth. You see, that's what's at stake here. So let me try to tone it down just a little bit. Take a deep breath. So just remember, they're coming after your eggs. Your mother is the Messiah, like she risked her life for this. That's earth. Many of our mothers have died in this and come back again. You know, our planet is suffering, but it's suffering inside of an illusionary shell. The only one that's really being affected is us, so it does matter. This doesn't mean you could just write it all off like, oh, well, it's just an illusion and I don't need to be worried about it. Well, uh, excuse me. Yes, you do, because you're being loaded with this. You're soaked in this. So you must make heads and tails of it. You must make right and wrong of it. You must bring it into balance. You must create law and order. That's what you were here for. We talked about that. Mandamus, you to writ, you must come in this and say, well, wait a minute. It doesn't look like there's infractions written about these atrocities. So mandamus must be called. This means that you must come from your own consciousness to create an idea of what are the injustices that are happening here. So that way you can put them into balance, because, of course, they're not going to write in the illusion what they've done wrong. You see, so. Also for the males, realize 90% of aborted babies that are naturally aborted are male. And this is because the indevelopment of the neural network. And this happens because of weak semen. So this is something that's never talked about. But for the males, if you're not cultivating Kundalini before you decide to go and have a baby, the baby, as I said, they're going into the seeds, into the egg. You can't have a baby uh, uh, that strong and able body and able minded or what well, I'll say is, is that you, you know, you have to do more work. I won't say you can't do anything because, you know, I definitely didn't have the A1 vegan diet when I came into this thing. But I'm telling you to increase our chances, if you may, of success, we have to strengthen our spark. And when we strengthen our spark, then that means you cultivate you meditate on bringing this child into the world. You know, you got six, seven months into holding the semen. You got OG semen ready to come into this and deal with it. See, if you really looked at it that way, like if you said, well, I'm the one, I bring in the ones who bring law and order. So you got to get back into the ancient culture. You have to get back into the ancient construct of why you will protect your mother. <laughs> and then say, well, this is strategized like the greatest uh, uh, real generals of the cosmos of all time. Say we need to bring in real soldiers The we need to bring in real souls. How do you bring in real souls? You have they must be cultivated. They must be purified, strengthened and refined through our own consciousness before they're embedded. And there must be a plan. See, that's called planned parenthood, not that building that they got down the street that gives out free condoms. You see, so this is this is what we're talking about. This is the process. And, but, and you can see because we're in the jokey joke in the play play in all of the, you know, the Hannah Montana's in the Taylor Swift kissing her cat. Two point five million views this, you know, because we're into this then that's the illusion and it will not dissipate unless someone gets serious, but it won't be strapping a bomb to the back. It won't be, you know, calling after something that doesn't even exist, that only existed within us. It doesn't mean any of that. It means this. This is what it took me years. It took lifetimes to finally come to a point. You know, it's you don't even know you your sequentials, meaning that you have several of you running just to get to a point where you get back to this because you have a hyperdimensional predator praying and eating your eggs, just like. You know what you see in nature when it's all off balance. The snake will try to come and climb up the tree and get into the nest and eat the egg. And it's all out of order. You see, so that's when the whole cosmos comes out of order. This is what we're dealing with here. You see, so nobody can say that this is better. 
<laughs> you see what I mean? It's like, well, and we got technology now. Man, you don't have anything if you don't have yourself. So this is the real deal. So man up, woman up, animal up, whatever you need to do and start strategizing based on the knowledge that you've been given. Like the cup runneth over. There is not enough. Uh, uh, there's there's more than enough, excuse me, of the, of the application and the amplification of this message. But it's still up to you now. When the balls put it into my court, I try to smack it home. First of all, I try to get the bases loaded first. <laughs> I'll strategize on it. So that's what we all must do if we feel serious about this or else we keep playing around, judging each other, knocking each other down like all of this. This is this is what I was saying. You know, enough is enough. So the conclusion of the message today, because we're coming into that last half and I do have actually I have about get you not about 40 questions and you know there will be a show that we get to those questions but as it is now you know there's no reason to end the season because there's quite a bit that still needs to be transmitted so just understand this children study everything we do okay and the reason is is that we're their source for everything so anytime something becomes your source for everything you should watch how you act and many of us in life have had to depend on someone or something and that became our source for everything and then if you monitored us during that time to how we act then you actually understand how what what we do we monitor every move and the reason is is the reason why the children study us and they learn from us is because they depend on us or they die so we are their gods see there's no other see in the construct of a consciousness that pure and innocent, that is the only place that the true concept of a supreme being can live. And that's what these children see us as. They're like, well, mommy and daddy, well, those are supreme beings. And they watch us and they watch how we react and what we do so that they can learn to become like us. So that eventually that they can become their source for everything. But if we're sitting down arguing, fighting, you know, uh, 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 listening to Lil John and Pastor Troy or or or. or um, rocket man with Elton John and that's all what we're fi filling our consciousness with then then they think it's okay and they got your eggs <laughs> your eggs haven't even hatched yet so this is a real thing so they have to adapt to the world that we created and so you need to start thinking about that. We all have to start thinking about that. This is not a burden for one man to bear and or one woman to bear. This is something that we're all in. So we got one more half to this or a quarter it would be. And then we're going to finish up and it's expansive and just realize this is here to empower you.